All right, so today I want to show you how I spot clean all my snakes here in my reptile room. I actually just went through all my snakes, and believe it or not, I actually have 64 snakes here in my reptile room. It's pretty crazy. As a matter of fact, today I just sold six of them, so it cuts it down a little bit. It's always changing. I'm always hatching out new snakes and selling some online. As a matter of fact, I used to actually clean these snakes about once a week and go through and spot clean. And I pretty much found out, you know, that's pretty much the typical trend. A lot of people just clean their reptile enclosures once a week. But I found a lot of times with the ball pythons, especially using the coconut husk substrate, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll push that in their drinking water. Sometimes it can get completely saturated where they don't have anything to drink. And then I kind of switched it up and I went to once a day. <laughs> I was actually going through every single tub every single day. And let me tell you, if you actually stay on top of it, it doesn't take that much time. Maybe like five minutes to actually go through every single tub. And then I found, you know, I could pretty much relax it down to every other day and I go through that's pretty much my schedule now every other day and a lot of times I'll feed on the off days so I'm not you know checking the tubs and then feeding on the same day and it's been working fantastic so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you my setup that I have I pulled all my stuff out here on the table and we'll just go through a few tubs really quick and I'll show you how I spot clean my enclosures all right, so I want to give you a quick tour before we jump into it. Essentially what I have, I don't have a whole bunch of stuff in here. This is only like a 200 square foot room. It's actually less than 200 square feet. And then this over here, this is actually my grow out rack over here. I have some males and some females. And then actually down here in the bottom, I have uh, my corn snake and then an empty tub for substrate. I have my hatchling rack over here. And here is 1039. And then I have my female breeder ball pythons over here. So that is pretty much it for my snakes and then I have some rodents over here this is like my wall of rodents I have rats and mice and all these tubs and then it's kind of stuck back in the back here I have an ARS 1065 rack that holds 65 hatchlings so as a matter of fact one year it was complete almost completely full and that was a lot to take care of between all these you know hatchlings and everything else and a lot of times you can have huge swings in the number of snakes you have and then it's essentially for my setup what I do is I actually keep all of my coat coconut husk as bedding material like landscaping material and for my gardening so I separate the coconut husk from just general trash that I throw in the dumpster and then I actually don't have water down here so I just carry my own water I don't actually have you know that many snakes down here I go through maybe four gallons a day so it's not too bad and then I have my little sprinkling can that I use just to add the, the water to the substrate I have some new clean deli cups and then I use an F10 that's diluted and then some paper towel and then just like a spoon to kind of scrape the stuff off the tubs so essentially what I do I, I can go through this real quick it's pretty easy it's pretty fast it's not too bad at all what I want to do is I'm actually gonna pull my light over here and we can just go through and I can kind of show you just how I check them real quick as a matter of fact check this out this is big red and the guy that was gonna buy my big corn snake actually decided not to buy my corn snake so I still have big red and if you actually look at the substrate in here you can see it is really super dry and I know corn snakes don't really like a lot of humidity but I don't like it super bone dry because it's really it's really super dry I'd say the humidity here in Colorado is you know down to 16% so what I do is I don't really keep it too humid I just add enough water to where it's you know wet on the bottom and then dry on the top and sometimes you have to add a little bit more when it gets really bone dry like that and then what I do is add a little bit to his water dish here. As a matter of fact, I go through that water dish about once a week and I really clean it out really good with all the bigger water dishes. And usually I, I don't constantly add the humidity here. I just want a little bit on the bottom. And that's kind of the, you know, kind of the unusual exception is this one. Most of your ball pythons, they like a lot of humidity. So for example, on this one, uh, this water looks like it could be replaced. So what I do is I just dump it in the bucket, grab a new cup, and then I actually take uh, the cap off of my, my little milk jug here and add some water. So this one looked like it needed a little bit of water. And sometimes if, it's, if it looks good, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put my finger right on the side. If it feels a little bit slimy in there, <laughs> you know, even though it looks clean, it's time to replace the cup. And I just rewash these cups so it's not too bad. And then what I do is I just kind of do a quick little spritz just like that. I used to use a pump up sprayer. And let me tell you, that little watering can is so much better. So this guy, 
Uh, looks like he's okay on the water. Could add a little bit more water. And then what I do is, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just uh, kind of put it right around the snake, really not on top of the snake. And a lot of times if they come up to the front like this, sometimes they have a mess in the back. So I kind of look, that looks pretty clean. And usually what I do is I go through these pretty quick. <laughs> these, are my, these are my triple heads. And it's a little bit harder with one hand with the camera. But usually, uh, you know, some, usually what I'll do is I'll open two tubs at a time and just kind of fly through these really quick. You know, it's, it's a lot easier with two hands. You can definitely tell. Uh, so, for example, on this one, you see there's a little bit of mess right there. And what I do for that, I'll kind of show you on this one. So, for example, uh, usually if they make a mess, what I'll do is I'll just kind of take some of this coconut husk and then I will throw it in my recycled coconut husk bin there. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of move all this up and then spray this down. This girl really made a mess. That's the F10 solution. And then what I'll do is I'll just take my paper towel and let's see if I can do this with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> then what I'll do is I'll just kind of wipe it down and then throw all this in the trash. And I'll come back with another paper towel and wipe it down. It's, let me tell you, it's kind of hard with one hand. <laughs> all right, so I clean that up really good. Essentially what I do is I just spray it down and then dry it really good and then put the snake right back on the hot spot. And the funny thing is, is usually when they go to the bathroom, a lot of times they'll come up and go to the bathroom up here on the coconut husk. And this one is looking a little bit dirty. I'm just gonna replace that one too. And it's really easy that once you get kind of the, the knack of it down, if you actually have two hands to do this, <laughs> I'm finding it's a lot more difficult with one hand on the camera. I was trying to think about if I could actually set this camera up on a tripod and do this. And this is kind of how it, just a spot clean real quick and just do that and then put them right back in the rack here so not too bad and most of the times you really don't have to do a lot to these tubs most of them most of the times they don't go to the bathroom that often so on this one looks pretty good so a lot of these they're kind of dried out because this is like the second day that i actually uh... <laughs> all right let's see one-handed yeah it's definitely more of a challenge with one hand working on these things. But this is essentially what I do. Just kind of go through real quick and then just kind of spritz the water just a little bit on there. And sometimes it's a little less work and sometimes it's more work. This one actually just sold. And let's see, this is my fire pie, looking pretty good. This guy needs some water changed here. So once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> One-handed. All right, all right. So not so easy with uh, with one hand here. I suppose I could put this camera up on a tripod. But that's pretty much it. And normally what I do is a lot of times, a lot of times I'll just go through like two at a time and just kind of check on these guys. And if they look good, these guys look pretty good. I could probably go through pretty quick and just kind of check them like this. This is normally what I do two at a time. You see this guy is a little bit low on water here. So what I'll do, these guys have been eating like crazy. It seems like when they eat a lot, actually, let me go back to these other ones and make sure these guys have water. But I'll go through like two at a time and just kind of top off the water and top off the humidity. So it's, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And I'll take a look at this. This guy is going into shed right here. So what I'll do on this one is, so yeah, let me, let me uh, <laughs> so I have to keep filling up my little water can. You guys are getting the raw version here of me cleaning snake tubs. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. So what I'll do is I'll just, so for example, he is in shed, but I'll do is I'll just kind of sprinkle a little bit of water right on him. And that water is like, like, like ambient temperature. Sometimes I kind of freak out because they're, they're in shed. You can tell this guy is, is really deep in blue, but you really want to keep them hydrated when they're going into the shed. And that is what I do in this guy. Could use a little bit more water. Let me see if I can chop off his water. 
So yeah, this is essentially what I do every other day. Just go through really quick. These guys, and most of the times you can, a lot of times these, you know, some of these tubs look really good and you can actually kind of hit like just some of the tubs every here and there. This guy, you can definitely tell right in the back, he's got a big thing where he went to the bathroom. So what I do on this one, take a look at this. Ooh, if I can handle this tub with one hand here. What I like to do on these big ones is I like to just kind of scoop it up with the spoon so I don't have to touch it. And I put it right in my coconut husk bedding and that goes right in my garden. As a matter of fact, someone was actually saying that I should actually sell this stuff and some people would pay good money for snake fertilizer, <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. So then what I'll do is I'll just move this guy up here a little bit and then just spray this down a little bit. Sometimes you gotta let them soak just a little bit to kind of get it out. And then what I'll do a lot of times, if it's really baked on, I'll just take the spoon and then just kind of loosen it up like that and then wipe it down. All right, so this tub is all cleaned up. And another thing I'll do once the, if the snake really starts freaking out is I'll actually put them around my neck. So that really seems to calm them down. Sometimes they just start bolting and just start freaking out going all over the place. And it seems like, you know, if you actually put them around your neck, they really mellow out to where it's a lot easier to handle them. Sometimes you get the snakes, you're cleaning their tubs and they just kind of freak out. So I can show you my reticulated python, Sonny. He lives in this tub and sometimes you have to watch out because this guy, if he's like in crazed feeding mode, sometimes he'll come flying out. <laughs> he's not really that friendly anyways. And what I like to do is I like to keep the coconut husks pretty fresh in his tub. As a matter of fact, he was kind of stuck in a shed and then I paired him up with Lucy and I took off some of the shed, but it looks like he's still a little bit stuck in the shed, which is kind of weird because I put this new coconut husk down in here and sometimes the extra humidity really kind of helps. And what I do is I like to just kind of keep his water topped off. And then maybe, I'd say, maybe once a week, I'll actually take these little dog bowls out and clean them. It looks like he's doing good. Doesn't need any spot cleaning at all. As a matter, it's, it's kind of amazing with these snakes. I'd say most of the times you really don't have to mess with them that much at all. And then I have these ARS8018 tubs. Look at that guy, he is ready for rat. <laughs> he's been eating like crazy. This is my head caramel female. And on this one, um, this one essentially what I do is I like to keep these a little bit more hydrated. These bigger tubs seem like they really dry out quite a bit. And so you can kind of mess them up if you go in there and spot clean and they're in a feeding mode. And then you, if you actually try to come back, sometimes it'll break their feeding mode. So sometimes I actually prefer not to feed them on the day that I'm actually spot cleaning. I don't know if it really matters that much or not, but and then this one looks pretty good. You can actually just kind of fly through these. This one looks like it needs some water. And the funny thing is, is, you know, most of the year they don't drink much water at all. And it seems like this time of year, they're really just eating when they're starting to pound the rats like crazy. And the more they eat the rats, it seems like the more they, uh, they drink water. So that guy in the back, that is a little mess back there. So what I do is I actually leave the tub right in there and kind of reach in and clean the spot. And as a matter of fact, if you actually take a look at this water, it's a little bit cloudy. So what I'll do is I'll just take this out and dump it. And then usually what I do is I kind of spray some F10 on there and then wipe it out and then rinse it and then put it back. So Bobby actually lives up here in this tub. And I noticed for Bobby, he just made a little tiny mess right here. And I know Bobby's not gonna bite me. So what I do is I just kind of cover it up and then move it right to my little compost thing. As a matter of fact, I actually have some extra bedding right down here. So when I take out the bedding from there, I actually can take another handful from there and then put it back in. It kind of replenishes the bedding as you go. So eventually, <laughs> if you don't, if you don't keep replacing it, you eventually run out of bedding. And look at Bobby, he's been eating a lot lately. <laughs> look at how much he's, usually he doesn't drink that much in like a whole month and now it's like in a couple days, he drinks half the cup down. That is pretty crazy. And I, a lot of these time, a lot of these cups I just change out and I don't even worry about, you know, topping them off in most cases. It's so easy just to change them out and just kind of go through all the tubs like that. And then I can kind of go through some of these and a lot of times they'll put a lot of bedding in here. And a lot of times what I'll do, this one, I actually just replaced it. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of dump it out and then put it back in. I know I just replaced it like just a couple days ago. 
you can definitely tell it's nice and white and clean. It's not slimy on the side of the cup. And kind of the substrate too, you can actually kind of push on the substrate and you can see it's, it's kind of like really firm underneath. If you have a really dry substrate and you push on it, it just kind of poofs up and goes all over the place. So you can kind of get an idea as far as the substrate as far as you know kind of how how dry it is so take a look at this if i actually push on this it is like super super dry right here and that definitely needs more humidity in the substrate here and i just kind of sprinkle it right on as a matter of fact i've seen a lot of people just <laughs> using those pump up sprayers and that takes forever a lot of times especially if they're in the shed you can put kind of a little water right back on the hot spot and that gets it to where it evaporates more and puts more humidity in the tub. I'm just gonna replace this cup, kind of going through. And these cups, usually if you don't have two hands, they can stick together <laughs> pretty good. I didn't realize how tough this was doing it with one hand. But that is pretty much how I take care of my snakes. It doesn't take that long. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit longer one-handed and then explaining it along the way. I'd say going through the whole collection, maybe about 15 minutes to do every single snake in the room. All right, so there you have it. That is how I clean my snake enclosures down here in my reptile room. As a matter of fact, if you actually learned something, feel free to leave a comment. Or if you see where I can improve on something, there's always room for improvement. As a matter of fact, I've actually seen some people, they kind of want run like a water line into their reptile room and they have like a temperature controlled nozzle where they can go through every single tub and just kind of spray it every single tub. That would be really awesome. But I haven't, as a matter of fact, this reptile room isn't that big. It's about 200 square feet. As a matter of fact, if I kind of stand sideways like this, I think I can almost touch both racks on either side of the room. It's not that big of a reptile room. I've actually seen some really big operations where they'll, they'll actually take these deli cups and they'll put them in this deli cup dishwasher. It is pretty amazing where they can run them through and wash them all at the same time. And that would save on a lot of time too. But as a small operation, you know, just dealing with just a few racks down here it really doesn't take that long at all. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.